So I was going to do you know, a little presentation here on a turtle graphics for Emacs that I wrote a few years back. So what I'm going to do is first, you know, show some simple three demos of it, of how, it, how the thing works. Then we're going to go under the shell to see what makes the turtle tick. All right, so here we go. So first I start by, you know, I, oh, here we go. Wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. Don't know. Control X. Oh, there we go. Give us. All right. So we start the thing. We load the file. And all right. So that's my load the Lisp file that does it. Then I'm going to set it up. So what this does is it. Set tells me that I'm going to have a um, field for my graphics. It's 31 by 31 pixels wide, and the uh, and the starting location is right in the middle at 1550. Do that. All right. So now I have a turtle. You can't see the turtle yet. We'll in a moment. But he's sitting in the middle of this pond, and I'm going to tell him to move, move. So he's seeing the pond facing north. Tell him to move 12 units. Okay. Now let's have a look. Render it. And there you go. You move up 12 pixels. All right. Now, and let's do it this way. Meta X. And there we go. And here's his current location. 12, sure enough, moved up 12, 12 pixels. All right. Next. So we're going to tell him to go a turn 135 degrees to the right. Okay, and then move 12 square roots of step, 12 square root steps up in that direction, and there we go. Tilt it, move down there. And finally, now we're gonna uh, turn again and close the triangle. So, simple example. So that's how turtle graphics work. Basics of it are quite simple. You just give your turtle directions how to move, kind of like if you were, like, like we do in this building, tell someone where to go to the kitchen, where there be in there. All right? Just direction. So that's the basics of it. Now I'll move to my next, to a next demo. So what I'll do is I'll take these and put them, you know, run these instructions inside a little program to get something more interesting than just a triangle. Um, control XF. So we're going to find, pull up demo number two here. All right, oops. And was it control what, what, what plus? Control X plus. Control X plus, okay. Okay, there we go. I have Okay, all good. So, all right. So now I'm going to give the, sorry? I learned something, control X, control X. Yes. All right, and then control X, C. So now I'm giving him a bigger pond so I can make some real pictures. It'll take a little longer to render, but all right. So what am I going to do? Well, now I just put a simple loop. So he's going to, you know, move, move, and then, then turn 162 degrees and just keep doing that 20 times to make a star. All right. This one takes a little longer. I did put the control. Two times uh, something in the turtle package? Or yeah, no, it's, it's just a standard, it's a an standard Emacs. macro from, from Lisp. Yeah, it is. Okay. In Emacs Lisp. In fact, yeah, I mean, all it basically, it's, it's equivalent of a for loop. Yep. It's not too fancy. It doesn't actually have, you know, steps or anything, unlike, say, the one in common Lisp. Basically, they have, basically, well, basically, the way iteration works in Emacs, you have the good old do loop, you know, it's your standard looping construct, and then the two built in macros you have are, do times and do lists. And okay, and there we go. So he you know, went there, turned, went there, and we got this. Spider Jaguar. Exactly. That's right. Okay. And then, so for the next thing, since it's you know in honor of Independence Day, we'll have some fireworks. All right, now, X. Probably don't want to make it bigger than that. All right, so, well, actually first I want to um, introduce something, another feature of my turtle package, which is the remember. 
uh, my track of turtles. So you've all probably heard the phrase, it's turtles all the way down. Well, that, so the way you get the turtles down is you have a stack of them. And what it does is that if you tell it remember, it remembers the position it's currently at. And then you could, you know, do something, move around, doodle, whatever. And then if you tell it return, it will remember, return to the last place it remembered. So, and I'm going to use that to draw a little pointy star. So here, all right, so, and um, I guess also, so Progan, you know, is the construct we have in this for, for blocks. So it basically tells it to execute all these things in order. Kind of like, you know, kind of like what curly braces in C do for you. All right, so. Yeah, I had to ask because it was a few months since our control was this point. Sure. Yeah, well, part of this was I wrote this, you know, in a, you know, tried to make the code as pedagogical as possible, so hopefully it'll help with that. So, okay, he moved there. And, however, next time I, all right, so now I'm going to do something similar, except now I move him by 120 degrees. Okay. And so what he did was, instead of going from here, he jumped back to his starting point and then went out 120 degrees. All right, and then I do it again. So you see that it always did it from that starting point because I told him to remember where he was and then go back there. Also, I say, yeah, sorry. Yeah, move 75 looked like it went a very different distance in different directions. Okay, oh, you know why? Because I made my pond a bit small. So it bumped into, I think it bumped oh, into the edge and got it. So yeah, I went to render fast, I made it small and it bumped into the edges. Yes. But, so the main point, also I should say when it returns, it also remembers the original direction it was facing. <coughs> so it returns to the original position and direction. It's like a function call stack. Exactly, well that's, well, that's exactly what it is and we'll exactly. actually see the stack itself when, I, when we look under the shell. All right, so now I'm gonna take, all right, so now I'm gonna make a bigger, bigger pond so things don't bump into the side of the screen and disappear. And what I do is I've now taken basically what I did here, you know, remember, move some direction, and rotate, move and go back, and put it inside a function to draw the star. So I don't have to actually do all these things by hand. So I can tell it, you know, how many, how many rays I want my star to have, how long they will be, and I'll also tell it if it wants to put something at the tip of the star. In case I want to put, you know, a little ball or something at the end, I could do that too. But, so first let's look at a simple example. So, well, all right. Okay, so we do our good old Control-Alt-F here. Control-X-E. Got that? Yep. It knows that? All right. So let's draw a... Okay, so it takes a little longer. Sorry about that. I want to keep the other example small, so this should draw a, a five-point star will appear once, there it is, there it goes, once it's finished doing it. And since I put nil, it didn't do anything at the tips. All right, so next I will do something at the tip, and what I do, well, let me just first run it. All right, so, oh yeah. So first of all, turtle reset here is a command that just, okay, it doesn't actually erase the buffer, but it does erase the thing that's gonna be map to the buffer. So it clears the area, the scratch area that it uses to draw it. So that this way when I do my next graphic, it's not gonna be on top of this, it'll render it on a clear screen. Roll E, control X, E. And in this case, what I'm gonna put at the end, well, it's another copy of the same command with a smaller star. So there we go. Each time it went to the end of the star, it drew another star. And this is, now you see the value of this thing for returning, because if I had, you know, done this, gone here, who knows where I am. But it has a stack, so it remembers, and it goes back, so we can get a little firecracker with stars at the end of the star. Okay. So having said that, you know, writing things like this can get kind of hairy, right? If I have to put, you know, quote, another star inside, if I wanted, suppose I wanted stars at the end of these little stars, or something. So what I'm gonna do is have Emacs actually write these expressions for me. 
So I'm going to do that with my, my back bolt here. All right. All right, called it helper function. So let me just first run it and show what it does. So, so here I give, okay, one minute. Control, um, no, what was it? Meta X, um, eval, print, last X expression. There we go. So what it did was, I just told it, you know, I gave it this list, and it automatically put in all the stars and the quotes in the right places. And the way it did it, is, well, first of all, you know, okay, I have to recurse over, loop over, curse over my list, and basically if my list is empty, there's nothing to do, but if it isn't, it gives me back star of the, you know, 5, 10, and, and whatever, and a star of the rest of the list. So, does anyone want me to say a few more about the back quotes, or? Okay. So that, yeah. Oh, okay, so the way the back quote works is see a regular quote would just quote the whole expression. Yep. Now if you use this backwards quote, what it does is the comp it takes whatever it sees a comma, it, it first evaluates it, then plugs that in. So the reason is, you know, when I gave it this, I don't want it, it's like I put a regular thing, it would just put car of car of X. I don't want that. I want that to take this list, take the first item five and plug that in there. And the next thing is the typical use that that macros get put to, which is, that backwards get put to, is defining a macro. So when I do that, all I have to do is a few control X E's here. So I just tell it that list. I don't even need to put the quote on this anymore because the way macros work. And it'll give us a firecracker where it starts with, you know, six, six things of length 60, then has a six five-pointed star on the end of each and a four-pointed star on the end of each five-pointed star. So there we go. You get to see, see recursion, to view the recursion, recursive fireworks. All right. Also snowflakes. Or, well, yeah, but since it's, since it's July, you know, if this, I was giving a talk in for, for December, then it would be snowflakes. But today it'll be a firecracker. Okay. So that's, you know, gives a basic idea of how this turtle thing works. And now, let me pull up my next file in this window. F, oh, F, wrong key, control, X, F. Uh, let me think, uh-oh. Turtle, I think it's this. Uh oh. Uh oh, wait a minute here. Sorry about that. Turtle notes. Got it. Notes. There you go. So use control X. Okay, so just. Um, Move past this stuff. Control V. There we go. Okay. So I'm just gonna have here summarizing the commands I had in my turtle package before I get to showing how they work. So like I said, you know, the setup command that set it up. Then there was this one turtle left, turtle right that moved the way the turtle was pointing. Uh, move, move it along. Here's a command that tells it whether I want to, you know, write in black or white or transparent, then, okay, so for example, if I want to move somewhere without actually writing, I can just tell, I just tell it to make the pen transparent and move. Then I have, okay, puts the turtle back home in case you forget. And then as I said, you know, some commands to tell me where my turtle is, where he's pointing, which way he's pointing, and then finally the things I mentioned with the stack and the commands that render it or export it to a file in case you know you want your put your snowflake in a file and print it out or whatever with it. What's the I.O. primitive you're using for this? What what? What is the input output primitive to do the screen address for this? Okay, so for you mean for for which which input output for for, for which for the entire package. Okay, so I'll show in a minute when I show the internals. But basically, I mean, yeah, I, 
basically what I do is I write the thing to a PBM file. So for the screen, there's actually an Emacs thing I'll show you that you can just hand it the PBM file as a data object and it renders it in a buffer. And in this case, then I would, you know, have something that actually writes that thing to a file. Yeah, it's, it's probably like a frame buffer, got it. Well, some, something like that. Okay, yeah, in fact, let's go to the other window and look at the source code. Or actually, I'll, well, all right. Oops, rule x plus, plus, plus. There's some source code. So, in fact, let's go down to that part of the thing since we asked. Well, yeah, we'll start with this one because this explains the graphic format. So, PBM, just out curious, how many people here have, see, have used the PBM file? Okay, all right, so for all but, for n minus two of you, what they are is the, it's the simplest graphics format ever invented. Very wasteful, but very convenient. So all it is is you store your, your file, let's say for black and white, as literally um, an array of zeros and ones. And the way it works is you put a header that tells me um, basically what size, of, what size of picture you have, you know, this many pixels wide, this many pixels high, the same parameter we had, okay. And then you just put this, the series of zeros and ones. So for example, if you told it, you know, so all right, so that's, and that's all it is. And so this command loops over a certain buffer in Lisp that I'm using to actually store what the turtle is doing and just writes out those zeros and ones to a header. Write, out, write them out to, um, well, what do I write them out to? Let's see here. <laughs> Current buffer, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then from turtle pond, blah, 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 okay. Oh, oh, I guess I haven't gotten to that part yet. Image data. Okay. So it calls the thing image data. Ah, place to store, yes. Image data, and there's a Okay, that exports it. That's right, it exports it as, that's right, it returns it to me as a thing called image data. However, when I wanna put it on the screen, then I call that thing and I use a command called put image. So, you know, so, well, put image and create, well, create, okay, it actually works in two steps in Emacs. Uh, almost, but it's kind of an internal memory file, not a, you know, regular disk file. So, it, I mean, okay, first I, this is just to tell it, if I do have an image, delete that, so I don't, you know, clutter it up, but then, so I call this expand, export thing, that gives me the file basically as a Lisp object. This is this PBM file as a Lisp object, and create image takes, you know, takes that graphics file and tells it to the PBM format, and there's a third parameter, which I forget exactly what it is, but important thing is I have, give it the graphics file as a Lisp object, and what type, and it will create a Emacs Lisp object, which is that graphic. However, that automatically doesn't show anywhere, that's why I have to use put image to, to take that image, that create as an image object, and actually plunk, plunk that down in some buffer somewhere. So I had this, you no, know, I had this buffer that I was showing on this screen earlier, which was called turtle display. So what I did was I told it to go into that buffer and plunk down the image there. So this is actually a generally useful thing to know in Emacs if you don't care about turtles. If you want to you know, put nice pretty pictures inside your Emacs files, you can use this put image, put image, create image combination anywhere. So let's say you had you know, a file from a disk and I wanted to you know, put a picture of somebody in the file. This is how I would have, it, have Emacs inserted. Okay. So, oh. All right, so that's that. So next I just wanted to show a little bit about, like I said, how the turtle actually creates, because actually the way it creates the graphics. So I'm gonna go back to my, well, first of all, any question about this before I go back? Okay, so I wanna, yeah. Uh, actually, I'm curious, what are the formats create image supports? Okay, so I know these are one. I think actually maybe, you know, well, hang on, let's find out here. Okay. Let's do a good old control HR and see what the manual has to say about this. Sure. <coughs> Okay. 
okay, control V this thing. Yeah, if someone, it's taller if somebody sees um, Emacs Lisp on here. Oh, wait a minute, I'm, I'm, I have to, oh, what did I do now? Do, what button do I push here? Uh, just click that. Click, click, the mouse click. And click How do I click the mouse? Uh, oh, I see, I clicked the mouse pad, okay. Oh, I see, I have to move up here. No, wait a minute. Move up, thank you. There we go, now it'll give me an elisp, so let's, mm, V, blah, 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 wait a minute. This is, yeah. Well, oh yeah, well, okay, fine, I'll look for it, yeah, yeah. So I would have seen it. Elisp, wait a minute, am I, where am I here? Am I, the directory emacs, oh, elisp, it was right here. Yeah. Well, I was going to look inside the ELIS manual for that. Well, I mean, would it have the, it would give me a doc string for that, but it probably wouldn't say things like all the formats it's supposed to. So that's why I was going to look. Let's see, what was that, now what was that thing called again? Oops, let me go to the other. Sorry about this. Um, no, no, no. So, I'll be, no, control G, control X, B, sorry about that. Yeah, turtle ELIS, it was, oh yeah. Create image, right. Let me. Image. And look where was the appendices. There was an index. Create image. Create, okay. Creating, create image. Create. Well, I'm, I'm there already. I'm there, create image. There it is, create image. And okay, well we should make this a little bigger. Create image, so, okay, there's, uh, let's see. Yeah, that's supported, that's where I learned about this. Okay. Okay, mm. function returns. Well, okay, it's not a very helpful thing. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> it's not in, yeah. I mean, although I heard people saying that, you know, SVG is supported, so I'm assuming if you tried that, it might do that too, which will be quicker, you know. Yeah, so it does, you know, obviously, these formats like I use, but, you know, I'm imagining that some of the standard formats, I guess, I guess the only thing I can say is try it with a few formats or maybe in the, in the Emacs wiki or somewhere they have information on it. Check the source code. So now you go to something like Open Clip Art, pull down cool, free, Creative Commons, SVG images, and snappy up your Emacs. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Precisely. So here's, so I figured for, for most people this may actually be the most useful part of the talk. So that's why I want to spend a little time on this. Okay, so so now I'm going to do now I'm going to show how this thing actually works. So we have a let me just go back to this thing. Let me just redo this. Okay, so I'm going to operate buffer that I call the turtle pond. All right, and now you'll see how this thing works. So the idea is I'm, you know, Emacs is intrinsically an editor, so this is how I use an editor to draw pictures. Right, so, oh, oh. no, 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 control X, oh. I'm not, no, I'm not trying to put, put loving messages to my buffer. All right, so move 12, there it goes. Move 12 like this, right? No, all right. Turtle render, obviously. The, well, turtle render again was that thing that read this out, read this into the into the graphics format file. So, not, nothing to see there. Then I move, right? Okay. And um, rotate again. Up, 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 up. Okay. Oh, I forgot to. Well, all right. Kind of. Okay. Even without the beard, the turtle got drunk, but. There we go. So kind of the obvious thing. I just had it do my drawing just by moving around and and um, you know drawing stars in this buffer, which I then wrote at zeros and ones as simple graphics file and rendered it. So that's 
they see how the thing works. And so I'll just wrap up by looking again at the source code and seeing if there's any other interesting things to note there. Um, source code, turtle.elisp. There we go. So like I said, you know, okay. No, go to stop, control, and meta, v up. Oh, 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 what would I do? Oh, command. Oh, well. <sighs> Let me just redo, redo this. Okay. Oh, well. Uh, pull x, kill buffer. Sorry about this. Oh, well, all right, who cares? It's not that important. Uh, where do I go up? Control, there we go. Started it. Okay, so here was, like I said, you know, my, let me do this, make this bigger. Control X. All right, so, like I said, well, so basically I set it up, so it's basically a matter of taking the different, you know, variables I have, so it's gonna be, like I said, there's, you know, some variables where I store which way the turtle's pointing, where he is, what color he is, and I make my stack that I'm going to put, stack the turtles up on. All right. And I make some, you know, make the new buffers, the buffer where the turtle pond I showed you where it has the little, you know, dots and stars graphic image, and then the display where it actually plunks the graphics file once it's done. Although, like I said, in principle, one could, you know, plunk it in some other buffer like you wanted turtle graphics showing up in a paper you were writing or something, you could do that too. And then, all right, and then just tells it, all right, do some other initializations. All right, and then all these move commands are basically just change those variables that, you know, if I want to rotate it, well, I just have to take whatever angle he's pointing at and add or subtract, depending on whether I'm going to that angle, depending on whether I'm going left or right. Likewise, to move it, I just have to add the distance he moves, all right? So nothing much there. Turtle, again, the trail, just changing, change more variables to tell me whether he's writing in black or white. Okay, go home. So these are kind of just what you'd expect they were. Okay, then, you know, the, this one's a little more complicated. This is a thing that actually goes to a location. So let's say I tell the turtle to move, you know, 12, 12 steps, 12 steps, it, it calls up this function once it's told me how much that is in the x and y direction. And this thing basically, well, basically what it does, it figures out, you know, I'm moving this distance, but how many, you know, how many steps do I have to move it in so I fill all, fill all the pixels on the path and no more. I mean, if I took too many steps, I'd be doing the same pixel eight times. And if I, you know, took too few steps, well, I'd have, have spaces between them, so I should pick the right number and then just loop over it and draw that many and, and put in that many black marks in my buffer. Okay, and all right, so kinds of details. Oh yeah, here's, the, here's what was causing the problem earlier when I made the pond too small, that it knows, you know, if you get to the end of the pond, just sit there, all right? So as I said, this is all well, doc you know, nicely documented since I thought it might be useful for people wanting to learn Lisp or whatever to, you know, look through this. Okay, then this sort of remember and return. So these are the things that deal with that stack. So all it does is very simple. I take the, you know, location of the turtle. It's x coordinate, x coordinate where the turtle is located, y coordinate where he's located, and which direction his, his snout is pointed in, and, you know, bundle them up into a list and pop that on top of whatever stack I have. And likewise, then when I want to return, I just pull that off, take that thing off the stack, assuming that the stack isn't empty, and set those variables back to whatever the values were on the stack. So just simple thing there. Okay. And then let's see, fine. It's reset thing, like I told you, just resets. Sets, puts, puts the turtle back, sets everything, all the variables back to their initial state in case I got lost. We had a little discussion before we got started about how important panic buttons are, so I, here's the one for the turtle. And then these are finally the files, I, things I mentioned actually right now. So nothing, nothing too fancy, but 
I just thought it might have been made for an interesting little talk, so thank you all for patiently listening. Thank you.